Fine surfaces and close tolerances are achieved by grinding. These precision results are made possible by use of the grinding wheel. Grinding wheels are made in many shapes and sizes for different types of jobs. The selection, mounting, truing, and balancing of a new wheel must be performed with great care before grinding begins. The right wheel for the job is determined by the kind of metal to be ground. In this case, SAE 1020, or soft steel. In the handbook, you find that soft steel requires the use of a vitrified aluminum oxide wheel of medium grade and 46 grit. Locate the correct wheel in the storage room. The symbols B46M45V mean that the wheel is of aluminum oxide, 46 grain abrasive, in medium grade vitrified bond. Test the wheel for unseen cracks by tapping it lightly with the handle of a screwdriver. The clear ring indicates perfect structure. In handling the wheel, never roll it on a concrete floor. The wheel collet and tools should be in a convenient working place. Clean all mating surfaces. Dirt creates stresses that result in breakage. Place a paper washer on the collet to provide a resilient bearing for the wheel. Mount the wheel carefully. Never force it. Because wheel grit may have gathered on the collet during mounting, wipe it again. Place a second washer around the inside rim of the wheel. Seat it evenly so that it will not be creased or torn. The collet flange has adjustable brass weights on one side. The other side has a recessed edge to fit the wheel. Clean this thoroughly. Slide the flange onto the collet and turn it until you line up the key and the keyway. This also lines up the screw holes. Insert the socket head screws around the wheel flange and turn them down hand tight. Use an Allen wrench to snug down the screws in succession. With a babbitt hammer, clamp each screw down hard. Tighten opposite screws to prevent uneven seating of the flange. Do the final tightening successively around the flange. Check the wheel speed rating. The maximum safe speed of this wheel is 800 revolutions per minute.
Start the spindle and, as a safety precaution, check spindle speed with a tachometer. Apply the tachometer to the rotating spindle. An adequate margin of safety is assured by a reading of 790 RPM. You are now ready to mount the wheel on the spindle. As this is a heavy assembly, use a hoist and a wheel hook. Fit the ends of the hook into the holes provided for it in the flange. The hoist furnishes a safe, easy method of transporting the wheel. Clean the hole in the collet thoroughly. Be sure the spindle is not rotating. Wipe it with care. Adjust the wheel until it slides easily onto the spindle. Put on the spindle nut. Drive the nut solid with an Allen wrench and a Babbitt hammer. This nut has a left hand thread, so that rotation of the wheel, which is clockwise, tends to tighten it. Complete the assembly by closing the guard. Stand aside as you start the wheel. During the first few moments, a new wheel may explode. Now prepare for truing. Move the tailstock away. This diamond tool is used for truing. Place it in the tailstock holder. Tighten the spindle clamp. Move the diamond to the face of the wheel. Make sure there is clearance between the wheel and the diamond. Infeed the wheel until it almost contacts the diamond. Start the coolant and the traverse. Infeed the wheel slowly until it contacts the diamond. An infeed of one thousandth of an inch and a medium traverse rate are used. The truing operation is necessary at this stage for these reasons. The inside diameter of the wheel is made with clearance so that it will fit easily over the collet. When the wheel is mounted, the clearance between the wheel and the collet is not equal around the circumference. Because of this, the periphery of the wheel is not concentric with the center of rotation. For precision grinding, the periphery of the wheel must be perfectly concentric with the center of rotation. The truing operation produces this perfect concentricity. When truing is completed, stop the coolant and the traverse. Move the diamond a safe distance away from the wheel. Remove the diamond tool. In production, the diamond tool may be left in place on the machine for further use. Allow the wheel to run a few moments to throw off any coolant it may have absorbed. 
then stop the wheel. The grinding wheel is now ready for balancing. With the wheel removed from the machine, clean the hole in the collet. Lower the wheel onto a wooden platform, never a concrete floor. Prepare the balancing arbor. Remove the balancing arbor nut, the washer, and the bearing. The tapered portion of the arbor is an exact duplicate of the spindle on the machine. Unless this surface is clean and free of burrs, the wheel will not turn true during balancing. Assemble the arbor on the wheel. The wheel is ready for the balancing stand. This stand has two sets of wheels mounted on ball bearings. The balancing arbor rests in a small V formed by the wheels. With the balancing weights removed, rotate the wheel. A heavy spot is indicated when the wheel oscillates as it comes to rest. Mark the bottom or heavy side of the wheel and replace the weights at equal intervals around the flange. In this position, they do not alter the unbalance. To counteract the heavy side, move the two top weights equally away from the bottom and rotate the wheel again. If the heavy side has not been eliminated, adjust the two top weights further. The other two weights are moved when additional correction is required. Repeat this procedure until the wheel stops without oscillation indicating that the grinding wheel is evenly balanced. Frequently, when the weights are adjusted, the position of the heavy side changes due to unequal movement of the weights. Mark the second heavy point and continue adjustment of the weights toward the top of the wheel. The balancing is now completed and the wheel is ready for production. Mount the wheel on the grinding machine. Dress the wheel for rough grinding. The action of the grinding wheel becomes clear on examination of the wheel structure. Grinding wheels are composed of, one, abrasive grains that do the actual cutting, usually silicon carbide or aluminum oxide. Two, bonding material to hold the grains together, such as vitrified, silicate, resinoid, rubber, or shellac.
and three, air spaces or pores to provide chip clearance. Each abrasive grain in the grinding wheel can be regarded as a cutting tool. During grinding, these grains wear down and break off, exposing new grains with sharp edges to continue the cutting action. Since the abrasive grains are of uniform strength, the hardness or softness of a wheel depends on the ease with which the grains break away from the bond. With the workpiece and machine correctly set up, you are ready to start grinding operations. In order to prepare for grinding, you must select the right wheel, assemble it carefully on the collet, true the wheel so the periphery is concentric with the axis of rotation, balance the wheel. Result, a wheel ready for the exacting demands of modern precision grinding.